This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look finally at 23H2. Just kidding. We're going to look at it again because Microsoft has actually released it and now everything's changed again. It's coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. The following show is brought to you through the generosity of people like you. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Windows on Windows. And this week, we're going to talk about the final shipping release of Windows 11 version 23H2. I know we've talked about this a lot, and in a recent episode, we talked about how you could get this release ahead of time, but since then, Microsoft has actually released the product. And uh, that came about a month earlier than I expected, for sure. It arrived on October 31st, 2023, which is Halloween. Perfect. And because of that, I thought we could talk about how you can upgrade, depending on which version of Windows you have now, or how you can do a clean install of this new version of the operating system, right? So now we're working with the stable code, the release code. Uh, Things are different. Of course they are. If you're lucky, and depending on the timing, uh, based on when this video comes out or when you might see it, hopefully Windows 11 23H2 will just be broadly available. If so, the best way to get it is through Windows Update. Um, You'll actually get a pop-up notifying you that it's available if you wait long enough. Otherwise, you can just go into Windows Update. You'll see this screen here. It will say Windows 11 version 23H2 is available. You really, really want to see that. (laughs) This is the best way to do it. It's uh, super fast. It's an enablement package. I think we talked about this. This is the EKB type of update. It happens very quickly. You do have to reboot, but you come up, everything's up and running. All the new features are there. There's no guessing. There's no waiting. There's no, uh, you know, CFR random installing of features. It should all just be there. So hopefully this is what you see. If you don't see this, that's okay. Um, You can still get Windows 11 version 23H2 today very easily. Uh, Microsoft has three official methods. They're all available from its website. If you Google or Bing, I guess, um, download Windows 11, this page will be the first result. And it has three tools on it, all of which will eventually work uh, today, two of which work. So we'll step through that. Um, The first is the Windows 11 installation assistant. This is the slowest and most tedious way to install or upgrade to Windows 11 version 23H2, but it's also the most reliable. If these other methods don't work for you, this will always work. It's It's an in place update. Um, I think that's the only way it actually works. And even if you're already on 23H2, you could sit there for an hour and a half and run through this thing and it would bring you back to 23H2. It it will always work. This is a kind of a fail safe version. The most common version is probably this thing here called the media creation tool. So if you select the uh, download now button under create Windows 11 installation media, what you're going to download is that tool, which I've already done. So I'll go to download here. And you can see it is right here. So this is just a simple wizard-based application. It will step you through the process of downloading the Windows 11 installation media in ISO format, a disk image format, uh, and then blasting that onto a USB memory stick that you have to supply. Uh, eight, gigabyte, eight gigabytes or bigger, of course. Uh, as before, nothing has changed there. Um, It's very simple. It should take under half an hour, even with a, you know, kind of a medium speed um, internet connection. There's not a lot in the way of options. Um, You can turn this off and choose a different language, for example, but there's only Windows 11. You're going to get everything you can get in in this one download. This is kind of the only way it works. I'm not going to step through this. I've already, in fact, uh, created installation media, Um, but this is a great way to do it. And this is the asterisk. Unfortunately, as of the time of this recording, that tool was still stuck on 22H2 for some reason. Um, I got in touch with Microsoft, finally had someone confirm that for me. I was testing it every single day. And what I was told was that by the middle of November, this thing should be updated to 23H2. So I will, of course, uh, write an article about that when it happens. We'll talk about it on Windows Weekly. If you're not sure, if it's really early when you watch this video and you want to be sure, actually, you should just skip over this method for now. And you could go to this third method. And the third one is to download that disk image file just by itself. 
Um, this is a simple little process. Again, it makes it look like there's a bunch of choices here. There really aren't. Um, your, the big choice is your language, English, United States. For me, you confirm, you'll be offered the download. You download this thing to your computer. I've already done that. So I'm going to skip through there and come down here. And here's the ISO file. And this thing's kind of neat because you can use it uh, directly. If you double click this, it will eventually it will prompt you to ask it if it's okay. But it will, what it will do is mount itself into the file system as if it were a physical disk. It will be given a drive letter and you can open that like any other drive or partition or disk or whatever and access its file system. And in this case, its file system has a setup file. You run this, you can do this right from the desktop. Uh, it will run through Windows setup. You can choose to upgrade, clean install. It's your choice. It will reboot a couple of times, but when you come back, you're gonna be on 23H2. And that's great for this computer, but the really neat thing about this kind of a file is that you can also use it to create that installation media, but without having to use the Microsoft tool. So I'm gonna eject that just to get it out of the file system. And we'll go back to where the file is. Um, there's a bunch of different tools you can use uh, for this purpose. I've recommended Rufus in the past because it has some nice features built into it that allow you to skip some of the terrible stuff in Windows 11 setup. So we can try that. So I've downloaded that tool as well. And if we run Rufus, uh, this thing will eventually come up. It runs directly from whatever folder it's in. And you can select the ISO file that you've already downloaded. And it will click start. And it, will create, it will create that disk. I'm not going to do that. Um, I've already... Uh, yeah, I already configured it for a, uh, a particular um, USB memory stick, but there's no need to do it. Actually, that stick already has with that the installation media on there, but you can do it, and it, you'll get those options, right, to bypass uh, things like the hardware requirements or the Microsoft account requirement. Um, so that's kind of a neat way to do it. In some ways, it's better than the Microsoft tool. So those are the big, I call them four, I guess four ways, right, uh, to get into this system. I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things you're going to see as you go through that installation or upgrade process. It hasn't changed too, too much, but one of the things I did do was go back and confirm that all of the workarounds that I've published and we talked about in a prior video still work. So for example, uh, if you're doing a clean install of this version of the operating system, you'll see this uh, first phase of Windows setup called the first boot experience. Um, one little tip is that you can choose a new time and currency format. I would choose English world because I'm English United States or English speaking. Um, there are other worlds in there. You can see an Esperanto world. There's a lot of them in there. I think there's an EU world. And what that does is cut down the amount of junk that it a offers you, um, you know, PC game pass, Microsoft 365 subscriptions, et cetera. And it also cuts down on the crap where that gets installed. You get a really clean version of windows. And we talked about that in a previous video. So, this still works, which is great. Um, by default, uh, Windows 11 setup requires you to be connected to a network of some kind because it needs you to sign in with a Microsoft account. Um, if you don't want to do that, um, I don't know that we talked about this previously, but you can type Alt plus, I'm sorry, Shift plus F10, and it brings up this command prompt window, and you type the text that you see here, uh, OOBE, which is out-of-box experience, UBI, slash bypass NRO, hit Enter, computer reboots, and now there's no more network requirement and no MSA requirement. Um, if you don't want to go through that, it's actually as simple. You get to the screen where it asks you for your Microsoft account. Instead of your Microsoft account, type in no at thankyou.com. We talked about that in a previous video. That still works. And uh, again, don't forget about um, Rufus, right? Because you can use Rufus to bypass uh, all those things in setup as well. So given all this information, <laughs> my hope is that by the next time we reconvene, we'll all be on 23H2 and not just the, some kind of pre-release, release preview, uh, you know, Windows Insider version of 23H2, but actual shipping stable 23H2. So we'll be talking a lot more about 23H2 in future episodes, of course, because of a bunch of new features. And um, that's going to be the baseline going forward, both here on the show and then in the Windows 11 field guy as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this uh, useful. I hope we're all in 23H2 next time when we come back. Um, you can find out more about the podcast at twit.tv slash HOW. We publish new episodes every Thursday. And I wanted to thank you all for watching. I especially wanted to thank um, everyone at Club Twit for keeping us going. Uh, frankly, it's a, it's a wonderful program. You should check it out if you're not a member. So I will see you next week. Thanks very much. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio-video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, 
product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs 7 bucks a month. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.